Hello all, uh, my name's Connor Morn, I'm Mrs Morn's son. I'm a professional chef but I'm trying to do as much work as I can from home. And I'm going to do a little video for you guys today. A uh, nice simple recipe, we're going to make some banana loaf. So it's, a, it's kind of like a cake, it's a bit like a bread, kind of halfway. Uh, and it's made out of very simple ingredients. Uh, you can use up some, some fruits, uh, well, obviously bananas, but there are other things you can put through it as well. Some apples, you can add some raisins if you have them going in the, uh, in the cupboards. Chocolate chips if you even wanted, you could go whatever you want, whatever you really want. But we'll get down to the basics obviously. So we start off with uh, 140 grams of butter. Now you can kind of just use your head a little bit with this because each block of butter generally that you buy in the shop will be 250 grams. So you don't need to get the scales out really for this. You can have a look at it and it's just over halfway because half of uh, 250 is going to be 125, we need 140. So we go just over halfway and I'm going to break it off just here. Uh, so we're going to add that to our mixer. If you haven't got a mixer at home, by all means you can use an electric whisk or even just a bowl and a spoon for a bit of a workout on your arms there. Um, now obviously this, obviously it's always really important to stay uh, hygienic, especially now with what's going on. I'm sure you've been told a thousand times how to wash your hands properly, so I'm not going to do that. But rest assured I've done that. But it's always really, really important to wash everything before you start, keep your surfaces clean. And something that's really important that's going to help you out is to weigh everything out before you start. And that way, when you want to start cooking and mixing, you literally just add things to the bowl as you go, and you can just tidy stuff away. So you're not weighing as you're going. It's just a case of having everything ready, and it works very, very smoothly, trust me. So, we've added our butter. Now we just want to start working that with our mixer. Now, to that butter, as it's going, we're going to add 140 grams of caster sugar to the butter, all in at the same time. And we're just going to let those mix together. That's called creaming the butter and the sugar together. So you want to really, really get them well worked together. And uh, so you'll see them, they'll kind of go a bit paler in colour, and that's called creaming it. It'll be nice and soft, and we'll be able to add the ingredients afterwards very, very easily. So, I'm just going to turn the speed up a little bit. In the background, that'll be going. We need to be getting ready two eggs mixed together. So, when you're cracking eggs, do one at a time. You want to crack it onto your work top. Don't go too hard, otherwise it's going to go everywhere. Don't crack it onto the side of your bowl, otherwise you might get shell into the bowl, okay? So just a little tap onto your work top. Feel a little crack there. And you use two hands, get your two thumbs where the crack is, and you just pull it apart like that. And I haven't got a single bit of shell in there. If you do though, that's not a problem. What you can do is take a larger piece of shell, and you just go inside and you'll be able to dip that out very, very easily. Don't go rooting around with your fingers because it's really, really difficult. Just use a little bit of shell and you won't have a problem. So then we have two, two eggs in like that, not a problem. Oh, there goes a bit of egg on the floor, fantastic. Not a problem. <laughs> now I've got one of these little whisks. You can use a fork or you can use a larger whisk. It's not a worry at all. Just get those eggs mixed up. We also have for the ingredients. 140 grams again, so everything's 140, it's very easy, of self-raising flour. So that's your blue bag, most likely, and that just means it's got some chemicals in there to help the cake rise. Uh, but as well, to help that out, we want uh, just one teaspoon of baking powder. That's a little bit more of that chemical again, just to help that rise, so it's nice and spongy and it's not too dense. Now the reason we're not adding the flour now is because if you mix flour too much, it becomes very, very tough. Now, if you're making something like bread, that's what you want because it helps make the bubbles. But for something like set, uh, like cakes, you want it quite soft, you want it quite crumbly. You don't want to overwork your flour. That's why we have that last, okay? Now, my butter and my sugar are nicely creamed at this point. I'm just going to bring the mixer over here. Make sure you always turn the mixer off before you add more ingredients. Uh, so, we're going to add now uh, oops, sorry, the eggs now. Li little by little, maybe in three parts, yeah? Because we want to help that egg mix in gradually with the butter and the sugar. So I'm going to go all the way up now. And once it's mixed, we then add a little bit more. Turn that off. Up we 
go. Add a little bit more egg. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go all the way. All in, two, two, an egg at a time, let's say, an egg at a time. And we're going to add that. So, obviously it's banana loaf, we need some bananas. If you've got some bananas in your fruit bowl that are starting to go a little bit too dark, a little bit overripe, that's ideal for this. Because as fruit ripens, especially something like bananas, that's how they get really, really sweet. So they might not be nice to eat on their own as just bananas, but they're a really good ingredient. So if you end up with a few in your bowl, they're absolutely fine to just put straight into the freezer. And uh, just leave them to the frost and peel them, and they'll be absolutely great for this. So I'm just literally mashing that up with a fork. Uh, you don't need to blend it or anything like that. Obviously you can use um, you know, bananas that aren't too ripe. It's going to work fine. But I think, personally, you actually get a better flavour with a darker banana. Right, so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these spatulas and just push everything down the sides of the bowl. Just to mix it one more time after that. Just to make sure everything is evenly incorporated. That's really important as you go. Take long, I'm going to add my banana now. Nice and easy. Just give it a little mix. I'm also here, a little pinch of salt. Now I know it sounds weird to add salt to something sweet, but salt doesn't always make things salty. It just makes flavours come out a little bit more. Trust me when I say that. Every good cake you've ever had will have some salt in it. So we'll mix that up. Now we want to add our flour in. So that's 140 grams of self-raising flour and a teaspoon of baking powder. Now whenever a recipe calls for a teaspoon of something, you don't want to go like that with it because that's two or three teaspoons. What you want to do is either get a knife or I just use the edge of the pot like that and you want it level. You want a level teaspoon, that's what the recipe means when it says one teaspoon. So we'll add that with the flour and you want to mix it slowly. So I was saying about overworking the flour, you don't want to do that at this point. So I'll put the guard on as well to stop it getting too cloudy in here. Now something I always have when I'm cooking is a little bowl of uh, hot soapy water with a sponge in it and that just means I can wipe down as I go. It's always really important to clean as you go, it'll make the whole process a lot easier and a lot more enjoyable, trust me. So it's wiping down, keeping everything clean. So if you ever want to add anything like your raisins or your seeds or chocolate chips or even some chopped up apple like I mentioned before, it would be at this point in the recipe where you do that. I'm just keeping it plain to keep things easy for you guys. So, that's mixed together, that's all good to go. Now what we're going to do is going to prepare our loaf tin. So we've got a two pound loaf tin here. If you don't have one of these, you can absolutely just use a cake tin, a round one. Just uh, something that's very easy to copy in the oven. Now what you want to do, this is a non-stick one anyway, but I'm going to show you how to prepare it if it's not non-stick, because the last thing you want is for it to be cooked and for it not to come out of the tin. So that's it's an absolute nightmare. So I've just taken a little bit of that butter that's left over. And I'm just going to rub it all over the sides and the bottom of the tin. Now what's that going to do is going to add a little bit of fat on the bottom so it just comes straight, straight out. It's like adding a oil to a frying pan, the same thing. So once we've done that, I've cut out two pieces of parchment paper, greaseproof paper here. One is as wide as the tin this way and one is as wide as the tin this way. Yeah? So we'll put the long one in first. We've got to make sure it's long enough that it comes up the edges a little bit as well. And cross over the first one and press it and the butter will help that stick to the sides of your pan. Just like that, that's really easy and that'll, you'll be sure nothing is going to be sticking to your pan there. You've got coverage from all sides. So, I'll make sure I get all the ingredients off of my, uh, off my beater there. Don't want to be wasting anything. Okay. 
Now just scrape around the sides of your bowl. Now just make sure that everything's mixed in. Don't overwork it, that's the most important thing. Otherwise it'll be dense and chewy and you won't get that rise that you want. So you just want to pour that into your tin. Make sure you're not wasting a thing. Otherwise, what's the point in even making it? Okay. Now let's show you. just shake it around. You don't need to pack it all in. Literally, just give it a little shake. And it'll spread out across the bottom. Now it doesn't look like it's completely full. But I was saying about that self-raising flour and the baking powder that's going to help it rise. So don't worry. That will be a relatively full pan by the end of it. And of course, if you want to add any more ingredients, you can add seeds on top here, you can add raisins on top here. Make the recipe your own, do whatever you want. Just, uh, this is more a guideline, I'm doing the bare basics and you can, you can do whatever you want with this. So this wants to go into an oven at 180 degrees, uh, put it on the fan oven, uh, it's 160 degrees, okay, if you've got a fan oven, for half an hour. Or until you get a cake tester and it comes out clear. But I'll do another video in a moment and I'll show you what it should look like when it comes out the oven. Thank you very much, guys. Okay, last take is number three. Lucky number three. <clears throat> right, so my banana loaf has finished cooking now. So the recipe says half an hour, but that can vary depending on a whole lot of things. Um, so mine probably all in took about 35 minutes, maybe maybe a little bit more. Yours might take 30 minutes bang on, or a few minutes more, or a few minutes less. It's, it's hard to say for sure. But what you can do to be sure that it is definitely cooked is you just take a cocktail stick, a wooden skewer, you stick it into the middle of the cake, because that's what is going to be the last bit cooked, will be the middle. So you want to go straight into the centre, straight in and out, and it should come out completely clean. If there's still batter on there, you want to give it a few more minutes in the oven. Now what I want to do, whilst it's still hot, that's important, this is something I just like to do with banana loaf, I just sprinkle a little bit of sugar on there whilst it's still hot. Nice one, just like that. So what, the good thing about us having these uh, bits of parchment up the sides, it makes it really, really easy to pull it out of the tin. Just like that. Like I said about that butter, it just helps it slide out and the parchment paper makes it really easy to lift out. So, you leave that there on a baking sheet. That's really, really important. So it's raised off the counter. If you leave it just on the counter or you leave it in the tin, what's gonna happen is all that moisture and steam that wants to escape it's just going to sit inside your loaf and it's going to make it really soggy on the bottom. We don't want that. So you let it air, let it cool all the way before you cut into it. That's really, really important. Um, and you should be really, really good to go. I'll do another little video at the end where it's cut up and I'll uh, show you what it should look like. But that is start to finish how you do it. Thank you very much for watching, guys. So uh, I've given my banana loaf a chance to cool down a little bit. And now we're just going to cut it into some little pieces. Now I'm just gonna show you the proper way to use a knife, okay? We're gonna use a serrated knife, any kind of loaf or cake like this, you want to use a serrated knife. Now, this is really important. Always keep those knuckles in the way if you're cutting vegetables, even if you're cutting bread like this. Have these knuckles, you see if I'm like that, you can see I'm never gonna cut my finger. I make sure all my thumb, well my, sorry, my thumb and all my fingers are behind that middle finger there and I'm never gonna cut myself. So I grab the rest of the loaf like that, everything's behind that main, that main guard. I can't cut myself. And then I just wanna use the whole length of the knife and cut through. I'm not pressing down, I'm literally just going all the way back and forth and it's cutting up into pieces. Now, it's nice and crispy on the outside. It's cooked all the way through on the inside, nice and spongy. That's what we're looking for, okay? So that is really nice for breakfast, for a little snack, which is with a bit of butter and jam, or just on its own. Give it a go guys, it's dead easy. Get uh, adult permission if you're a bit younger or if uh, you, you first time using knives or the oven, just get, get in there and have a go. It's good fun. Thank you very much for watching guys.